Thanks, everyone. Uh, I don't have a um, roadkill photograph, but this is about the closest that I could find. Um, thanks for the, uh, the opportunity. Um, I will try and keep you entertained uh, for the post lunch, but I can't guarantee that. Um, we're talking about project management, which has its uh, fairly repetitive side. Um, the focus in my presentation will be on um, how a road agency, uh, and perhaps any other infrastructure agency, considers connectivity issues during the development of a road project. Um, we've got a series of presentations, I think, that follow from mine that go into more of the, the detail about how we actually implement those on the ground. So my, my focus is very much on the, the planning uh, phase. Um, I'm going to go through, I guess, four elements of the presentation. Uh, the first one being a bit of an understanding of what makes the road project complex in terms of dealing with connectivity. Uh, go through the various stages of a, of a road project, uh, and then how we consider biodiversity connectivity within that road project, and then talk a little bit about, I guess, what I see as good outcomes from a, from a standard approach. Um, I guess, before starting into the detail, it, it's critical to acknowledge uh, the work that, that people have done uh, beforehand. Um, the RTA has been actively, I guess, considering connectivity mitigation since the, the late 1990s, and this is an example of our first uh, overpass, and designs of overpasses have changed a bit since, since then. Uh, although this one uh, still exists. But uh, again, in, in this room we've got today, there are a number of consultants, uh, community members, um, RTA staff and environment agency staff who have generally been active in, in making things happen without the efforts and the personal effort of a lot of those people. Uh, we wouldn't have a lot of the structures that we've got in now. And it's somewhat of a risk for uh, an environment agency rep or an RTA rep to say, this is the best way to go. We don't quite know whether work. The fact that people have done that uh, without us having a clear understanding of, of what the outcome is, I think, is, is a good thing. Uh, um, in terms of complexities for a road project, uh, these are some of the things that, that other people have touched on, but some, from my perspective, will have a different sort of uh, taste, I guess. Um, clearly, road projects come in different sizes, shapes, and, and levels of uh, linearity. But the problem with linearity is that with any other form of development, you can go around it. With a road project, it, it basically um, covers the area, so you've got to get through it. The legislative and administrative issues are, are very, very complicated in, in road projects. And there's a whole raft of legislation, uh, and I'm thinking of things like Roads Act, contracting law, uh, occupational health and safety legislation. Um, before you get into the environmental planning and approval legislation, that limit what we can do. And just one of the examples is um, designing an underpass which no one can get access to safely to, to, to maintain. Uh, can create breaches for us of OHS legislation that we've got to consider. Uh, land ownership is a, a critical one. The, um, for a road project, we only ever have control of a small area of, of land at, at any one time. Uh, we don't own the land either side of the project uh, and have no control over that. And I think that South East Queensland presentation sort of clearly indicated that where a lot of the land is, is private. And you're trying to do a connectivity strategy that develops the road, we're only managing a small amount. Project timeframes can be very, very variable. Uh, a number of projects are ones which have to get up straight away, um, and many projects have very long lead in times. Uh, the recent Commonwealth funding uh, arrangements means that we have to get projects up in very, very short time, time, um, time frames. So uh, our record of five and a half months for the Hume will, will have to be down to I think three and a half months for, for the next one. Um, there are also a lot of uncertainties about funding. Funding can exist, can disappear, can come back again. Uh, and that again creates problems for us deciding how do we monitor and manage the connectivity. Uh, everyone's talked about the next stop point. Um, the concept of roads as a corridor has also been mentioned. And a lot of our roads, we maintain them uh, where they are, the, the, the environmental corridors. So it becomes a, a maintenance issue rather than a, um, a managing uh, or providing a reducing barrier. And then the big issue of maintenance and ongoing management. Uh, my colleague, <coughs> Greg Collins, is going to talk to you later about, about those aspects. Uh, this is just to quickly to give you an example of the types of projects. And uh, this is the final upgrade to the car in Cops Harbour. Really, it's just there. This is a, a major road project through an area of connected habitat. We have to deal with that sort of project in some way. Uh, we have other projects. This is the Kim Highway duplication. Uh, it's a very disconnected landscape, 
there's potential impact on a, on a lizard if two populations either side. Do those two populations need to, to meet the questions around that wind connectivity and that sort of landscape? Um, and smaller jobs, I guess, is what I'm trying to, to illustrate here. Uh, a lot of the work that we do is uh, clearing table drains, um, lopping trees that overhang uh, the road. Uh, those are projects that may only have a two or three day lead in time, but there could be some connectivity issues coming up there. How do we consider those in the, in the project? Uh, I'm hoping no one can see the detail of that, but uh, that, that is basically the, um, the RTA's project um, process. And, um, I guess my, my point here is that um, each project phase has a whole set of different management arrangements, different guidelines, different procedures that apply to it. And making a decision about where you can see connectivity in each of those project stages is, is really, really important. Um, for small projects, those phases may well be um, overlapping, but for large projects, they're often very discrete things. And it's a very linear process. You start at the top and you finish at the bottom. And, and whilst you can go backwards in the process, um, that often creates a great deal of difficulty. So if there's a need for a connectivity measure, that really should be considered at the strategic stage where you do it funding. Uh, if you start to consider that at the construction stage, it's going to create a lot of difficulties. Um, I'll just quickly go through each of the stages so you've got an, an idea. I guess what I want people to think about is uh, if you were trying to uh, implement a connectivity measure, what would you be doing? Stages. The strategic stage is very much about getting up the project, um, making it viable. Uh, it's often driven by community demand and, and very rarely uh, is biodiversity a consideration there. Um, so the sort of big questions about do we upgrade the new highway, do we build a new road somewhere else, um, do we remove these trees because they're a safety hazard. Um, but potentially uh, if we get to, to be like Europe, mitigation program for, for existing roads, we obviously consider that as a new project in itself that has its own strategic phase, which is where we would have to pull all those arguments together to justify such a program. Um, the next phase is the, the concept uh, stage, and, and this is probably the most critical stage in any sort of road project where you're doing, dealing with your route profile selection, you're doing your initial environmental investigations, you're designing your road, uh, you're undertaking your assessments and approvals and you're undertaking environmental studies. So all that sort of preliminary work is often done in that sort of stage. Um, and uh, there's various lead times in, but you know, that's sometimes 18 to 12 months uh, ahead of the project. Uh, the design stage of a project is where uh, we're actually in the detailed designs where we've got uh, the consultants uh, drawing up the road diagrams, uh, also where we're designing the culverts and deciding whether they're multi-use, we're deciding, uh, designing bridges, crossing structures, the actual underpasses, uh, and the landscape works for my follow-up project. Uh, the construction stage is, is pretty simple, it's where the, the thing is built. Uh, as you can see, it's only one, one stage in the, the process, and really that's about managing uh, fauna on site, I guess, in terms of connectivity issues. Um, importantly, there's a the finalisation stage, and, and that's where project is completed. And this is where we've talked about where the audits happen, where the make sure things are delivered. This is possibly uh, this sort of stage. But, but often at the end of a the project there's a handout to another manager and how do you make sure the commitments that are made at that stage are actually uh, met. And finally there's a maintenance stage um, because um, if we're designing assets and building in uh, fencing or crossing structures, someone has to maintain them uh, and we need to make sure that's done. Uh, I guess it's important, and people involved in projects will, will know that different people are responsible for different stages, so it's really critical that commitments are made at one stage and transferred to the next stage. Um, John, in his talk, talked about um, engineers and scientists working together and, and why we invest in connectivity measures. And I think it's a little bit broader than, than, um, than maybe what John was saying. I think that um, as an agency, uh, there is a genuine commitment there to minimise the environmental impact of its work. So, so we invest in kind of measures because we want to minimise the environmental impact of 